crashing. It's crashing. Hurry up. Sell, sell, sell. Hurry up. Get rid of it. The portal market is, is, is crashing. It's on fire. Is what I would say if it actually was happening. Well, I probably wouldn't even say that. Honestly, I wouldn't care. It happens. But I'll talk about the, the market for a second. Before I hop in, this is probably my first time doing this kind of video on this channel. Usually, this channel has been more dedicated to card openings. But, you know, ever since I created the, the card channel, it was supposed to be about everything card related, not just openings. It's just because I've been so busy with everything else, live streaming and my main channel. I never really had a chance to sit down and kind of talk about these things. And we're doing it today. I took time out this morning to do a video like this. And today, I'm going to be talking about specifically the, the market because it's been kind of ridiculous in the last couple of months now uh, if you've been paying attention kind of give you some like i guess general uh like information about this earlier this year we've seen something that none of us saw coming in the, in the market and that was an explosive rise in prices across the board i mean it was ridiculous like the thing is is if you collect any kind of cards or not even cards i mean you collect games shoes dogs well probably not dogs but anything that you collect the the value for things tends to go up over time a little bit slowly in general, but it always kind of tends to go up over time. And the reason why is because as time passes, less of a set thing becomes available and more people come into the market that actually want that set thing. In this case, a lot of people got back into Pokemon in the last couple of months. And I don't really know why. I mean, I know in the recent times, you know, you know, you had stuff like the Logan Paul um, first edition base, base box break. Obviously, every time a card sells for a record price, more and more people hear about it you know right now uh, on pwcc the time you're recording this video a first edition psa 10 charizard where 121 in the world exists is sitting at, at 276 thousand dollars if you guys remember last month logic bought his uh, charizard for 186 thousand which actually came to 226 thousand dollars after like the premium so it's gone up that much and the reason why is because only 121 exists which about a fun fact the 121st psa 10 was graded actually a couple days ago which is wild to me Shout out to that one lucky person. But with that said, more and more people would want to get back into that nostalgic feel of Pokemon. And as more people enter, the more people want stuff. And because, I guess, maybe because of COVID, maybe because people are just like cooped up inside or they just want to go back to nostalgic things. A lot of people were looking at Pokemon cards in the past year and that's what's caused the prices to just absolutely explode. I remember back a year ago when I would think, you know, paying $90 a pack for like Neo Genesis was too much. And now you're looking at like a thousand dollars a pack for Neo Genesis and it's just kind of crazy to see where it's gone. And, you know, everyone's been asking the same question in the last couple months and that has been, when will it stop? When will it slow down? And I think we finally got to that point where it kind of slowly slowed down. But the thing is, it's not a crash. That's the most important part. It is not a crash. The thing you're, you're always going to see in the collectible market is there's going to be those moments where stuff just absolutely explodes. PWCC has their auctions that they do every single month. And there's a lot of eyes on these auctions. There's a reason why that Lugia right now is at like $80,000 and that Charizard is at $280,000. But the second that PWCC market uh, is done for the month and we have to wait another month for the next one to pop up, there's going to be other sales here and there that'll pop up that won't have as many eyes. And when people sell cards there, there'll be a lot less. You know, a Lugia sold for $50,000 a couple weeks ago in a private deal. And I'm sure if that was marketed and pushed out, that probably could have been even more. But, you know, I guess the two people that met for the trade agreed to $50,000, and that's what the person got it for. And now that there's a lot of eyes watching and seeing a Lugia pop up on eBay, everybody wants it. Everybody wants it. And that's what causes the price to just to do this. Now, the thing that I noticed in the last couple of weeks specifically is there's been a lot more supply, you know. Uh, a couple months ago, there's been a lot less supply, and because of that, prices tend to be a bit higher. But but what I noticed is there was, there was a lot more Gold Star Charizards selling in the last couple weeks. There was a lot more Sky Ridge Crystal Charizards selling in the last couple weeks. And because more pop up, you know, it allows more people to get it. So once one person got it, the next person that had the highest bid would want to try to get it, and the next person. And that's what causes the price to kind of do this. But the thing is, is the prices aren't crashing. It's not like it's a situation where the prices will keep going down. You know what's going to happen a month from now? It'll do this. My most famous example for this is, is Crystal Charizard. I'll never forget this. So back when I first discovered Crystal Charizard a couple years ago, I know I was a little bit late, but again, when I got back into Pokemon, I was looking through all the Charizards that were released. I ran into a Crystal Charizard on Troll and Toad for $1,800. And I remember at the time I was like, that is so much money. You know, back then paying four figures for a single raw card ungraded was ridiculous. You know, the only time you ever do that is for a first edition Shadowless Charizard from base set. But anything else outside that, I think the most expensive Charizard that you could get was a Gold Star Charizard, and they were usually selling for about five to six hundred dollars. But I saw Crystal Charizard pop up, and I was I was like, man, eighteen hundred dollars? It's that's ridiculous. I'm gonna do it. I pulled the trigger. It hurt. <laughs> I bought it. 
I got to grade it and it came back as a 10. I was instantly excited because I was like, oh my God, this $1,800 card now is worth like six, $7,000. It's okay. You know, to me, it's never been about the money, but when you spend a lot of money on a card and then the grade is justified for it or even worth even more, it's kind of like, okay, it's, you know, it's not that bad. If you spend, let's say $1,800 on a Charizard and it comes back as a PSA 6, you're probably thinking like, ah, <laughs> that's where the pain can come in. But the reason why I'm bringing up this Charizard is at the time, they were about five to six thousand dollars for a PSA 10, so I was excited. However, the second I got my card back, there was a crash. To those who are who've been in Pokemon cards for the last couple years, you probably might remember this. There was a Crystal Charizard crash, and a PSA 10 had fallen to like sixteen hundred dollars. <laughs> I could have bought a PSA 10 for sixteen hundred dollars less than I got the, the the uh the raw version for. And I remember at the time thinking, ah, I mean, whatever. You know, I still have a PSA 10. All really one one is in my collection. I didn't buy it for flipping. I didn't buy it for, you know, to flex and all that stuff. I just wanted it because I think the Crystal Charles, was one of the coolest ones. But you know what happened afterwards? A couple months later, a couple years later, that same Charizard is in a 20 grand plus range. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, anytime you get a crash in any kind of thing that you collect, there's going to be a situation where... Uh, usually what it is, is there's too much supply than there's demand. You know, it, it is too much supply entering the market. Like right now, if, if for some reason, everybody that owned a first edition uh, base box was to, for some reason, put it up for sale, you know what happened? They would all crash. It would be horrible. That $360,000 sale will probably fall down to like $150,000. Well, probably not that low, but you know what, what I'm trying to say is, if, if there's a lot of supply, then there's gonna be a lot less people who, number one, uh, will want it, and two, there's gonna be a lot less people that will want it at that time, which will cause the price to do to do this. But over time, it's gonna do that. So like that uh, Charizard that I spent $1,800 for, now, as like I said, it's worth 20 grand plus, and, and uh, the point I'm trying to make here is everything that's going down now doesn't really matter because a year from now, six months from now, 10 years from now, the, the prices will be comical. So that, that's all I kind of wanted to say. You know, a lot, a lot of times people ask me, like, when are you going to sell your collection? I'm like, well, I don't really care to sell my collection. I don't want it. I'm not, I'm not buying this stuff to sit on and to flip it. I mean, if I ever have to get in a situation where I got to, you know, get rid of some cards to pay for something, let's say there's like a medical emergency or something, I can do that, you know? But in general, like, like the point I'm trying to point out is, is if you're a true collector, this, this small market right now that's crashing or going down, declining, doesn't really matter because a year from now, it's going to be a completely different uh, like situation with it. It's going to be back to normal. It's going to be probably worth twice as much. So yeah, everybody stop. Like, calm down. You're good. I promise you're good. So yeah, comment section below if you guys have any questions in regards to, uh, I guess, the, the market crashes, the declines, the inclines. Let me know down below if you have anything you want to discuss uh, or you want to toss in any of your two cents in regards to the price changes recently. Feel free to do so. And when I say price changes, I mean, it's been some ridiculous ones. For example, PSA 10 Unlimited Charizard was worth... But what, 30 grand? I think a couple sold for 30 grand about a month ago. And then in the past week, we've seen one sell for 16 grand. I think we've seen one sell for, for 20 grand. PSA 9, first edition Shadow of Charizard, was selling at about 40 to $50,000 a month ago. And one sold for 30 grand the other day. So, like, that, that, that's the market, that's the price crash that we we're talking about here. Just kind of toss it out there. In general, though, expect more videos like this. They'll be kind of more random. Usually, whenever there's something to talk about, that when, when it pops up. And I definitely want to try to toss out more uh, at some point. But. For now, I just kind of want to toss it out there and talk about it because I just, I just been on mine a lot and, and yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.